I was on my wonderful electric bike with Lucy when I passed a woman who was on a pathway. She was completely alone, and I thought, I cannot approach this woman. She's going to feel intimidated by a strange man coming up to her. And I began to think about it, and I thought, well, this is the area that I spoke to Mario, that wonderful interview. Number two, Jesus spoke to the woman at the well alone, and he also said to preach the gospel to every creature. So I decided to go back, and I'm sure glad I did. Okay, Melody, can I permission to interview you for YouTube and all media purposes? Yes. You're afraid of death? Sometimes. Um, Sometimes not? No, because I understand that it's a part of life. Why is it a part of life? It's the end of life. I never really thought about it that way. Yeah, death is terrifying. We don't talk about it because we don't want to seem vulnerable. Mm -hmm. But we're all afraid of death, and it's good to be afraid of death. Mm -hmm. You said you're scared of it sometimes. You're scared of it when you think about it. But when yeah. you're filling life with other things, we don't think about it, and it kind of goes away. But we all know we've got an appointment to keep. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in God? I do believe there's a higher power. Yeah. What's the difference between a higher power and God? I think for me, I didn't grow up religious. So for me, I see God... Uh, God as more of like a religious thing as like Christians and Catholic like all I don't really know about too much about religion but I just know my mom always told me to pray and to be thankful and to be grateful but never really got into God so I know there's something higher but I don't know exactly what it is uh, do you ever read the Bible um I've read some verses my best friend sends me verses um, she has a Bible that she reads on on a daily and she'll send me verses every day she's a Christian um, I wouldn't say, but I think she kind of leans towards it. Yeah, because she doesn't go to church, but she does read Bibles and stuff like that. Do you know what the message of the Bible is? I don't. In the Old Testament, God promised to destroy death. And in the New Testament, it tells us how he did it. Do you know that? No. Are you doing anything you think God would frown on morally? Um, I think so when it comes to myself. What about the Ten Commandments? That's how to know if you're morally offending God. Have you lied and stolen? When I was younger, yeah. You were younger when I met you. <laughs> I'm 30. <laughs> yeah, we tend to trivialize sin by putting it in the past. You try that with a judge, the court of oh, law. Yeah, that would not I just stole a car, but judge, it was in the past. Yes, of yeah. course it was in the past. It wasn't in the future. So let's look at the Ten Commandments and see how you're going to do on Judgment Day. Have you ever used God's name in vain? I think I would say yeah. I ever wonder why we do that? Instead of using a filth word, I mean, you hit your thumb with a hammer, you could say the S word, human excrement, mm -hmm. or we use the name of Jesus Christ, or the name of Jesus, or the name of God. Why would we do that? I have no idea. It's strange, I, isn't it, yeah. when you think about it? I mean, you wouldn't use another person's name to cuss. You wouldn't use your mother's name. You wouldn't use Abraham Lincoln or anything like that. But why would we use God's name as a cuss? This is what the Bible says. It says, each of us is in a state of hostility within our minds towards God. And evidence of that is the fact we use his holy name as a cuss word. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does it's make sense. the same reason criminals hate the police. They'll speak horrible at police. They'll even kill a police officer. They don't know who he is, but if he's wearing a badge. He stands for what's right, and they don't like that, so they'll kill him. Mm -hmm. And that's how we feel about God. When God became a person, we killed him. He was crucified because he spoke the truth. So, let's go to the seventh commandment. Appreciate your honesty, Melody. Mm -hmm. The Bible says you shall not commit adultery. Have you ever committed adultery? No, not that I can remember. <laughs> yeah, now listen to what Jesus said, and this is what put me against the wall. He said, whoever looks with lust has committed adultery in the heart. Have you ever looked with lust? I would say, yeah. Have you ever hated someone? Yeah, I would say. The Bible says if you hate, you commit murder in your heart. That's how high God's mm -hmm. standard is. So we're just looking at how you're going to do on Judgment Day. So far, it doesn't look too good. Yeah, it, just, <laughs> it doesn't look really good. <laughs> you've told me you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart, and you've committed murder in the heart. So if God judges you by those Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, do you think you'd be innocent or guilty? I think I would be guilty. Heaven or hell? I'll go straight to hell, I think. <laughs> does that concern you? Um, I heard you laugh, but it could have been a nervous it laughter. It was a nervous laugh. It was a nervous laugh now that I think about it. Yeah, um, yeah that's concerning. Yeah. 
Do you know what death is according to the Bible? You know, you mentioned death is kind of just natural and it comes after life, but the Bible specifies what death is. It calls it, it, calls it wages. The Bible verse is the wages of sin is death. In other words, God is paying you in death for your sins. Like a judge looks at a murderer and says, you've earned the death sentence. This is your wages. This is what we're paying you. This is what you've earned. A malady sin is so serious to holy God, he's given you the death sentence. Capital punishment. Your death will be evidence to you that God is deadly serious about sin. So here's the big question. What did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? I'm not too sure. You actually do know, but you don't understand it. And because you don't understand it, you don't value it. Have you heard of Jesus dying on the cross? I have, yeah. yeah. Most people know about that, but they don't know this. And Mel, if you can get a grip of this, it's going to change everything for you. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus came and paid the fine. That's why he said just before he died, when he was on the cross, he cried out, It is finished. In other words, paid in full. It's like being in court and having speeding fines and someone pays them for you. Even though you're guilty, a judge will say, you can go, someone's paid you fine. Well, God can let us live forever legally. He can take the death sentence off us, all because Jesus paid the fine in full on that cross. And then he rose from the dead and defeated death. The Bible says it was not possible that death could hold him. And if you'll simply repent of your sins and trust in Jesus, God promises he'll grant you everlasting life as a free gift, not because you're good, but because he's good and kind and rich in mercy. Do you know what repentance is? No, I don't. It's where you confess and forsake your sins. You say, I'm, I'm going to be a Christian and I'm not going to lie and steal and blaspheme and fornicate and commit adultery. I'm not going to do those things. I'm going to continually turn from them because I want to be genuine as a mm -hmm. Christian. So it's, it's, repentance is a continual thing. And then you trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. If you're going to jump out of a plane 10,000 feet, why would you put on a parachute? To save you time on part of my death? Yeah, to save you from death, and your motivation would be fear. You fear hitting the ground at 120 miles an hour. So that fear is your friend, not your enemy. And Mel, I've tried to put the fear of God in you today. I've tried to make you scared, make you sweat a little, make you go gulp. I'm in big trouble. Hoping you'll see that fear as your friend, not your enemy, because it'll drive you to God's mercy where you'll find everlasting life. Is this making sense? It does, yeah. You going to think about what we talked about? I am for sure. <laughs> On this bike ride, I am. <laughs> when are you going to repent and put your faith in Christ? I don't know. Let me speed up your process. When are you going to die? I hope not soon, <laughs> but... But it could be, couldn't yeah, it? It could be any, any minute. It could be. 150,000 people die every 24 hours. Yep. They die in their 20s and their teens and their 30s mm -hmm. and their 40s. Some people die old. Some people die young. Some die of a heart attack. Some die of... Walking. An aneurysm, just walking along, you just drop dead. And so there's a sense of urgency, and I want you to think about my tone. Think about why I'm so earnest. It's because I care about you. I don't want you to get to hell. And so think of it like you and me standing on the edge of a plane 10,000 feet up. I've got my parachute on. You haven't got yours. We're, we're both going to jump. And I say, you weren't going to put your parachute on. You say, I don't know. I'm going to think about it. Well, the best thing I could do for you to be hanging out the plane by your ankles for two seconds, you'll come back in and say, give me the parachute. And I've tried, because I care about you, to hang you out eternity by your ankles just for a few minutes and say, Melody, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That's what the Bible says. This is the one who created lightning and thunder that scares the living daylights out of us. And it's only nature doing its thing. It's what he's made. He's not even showing his anger. But the Bible says we've angered him by our sins, his wrath abides on us, and when he commands us to repent, we should be really quick to obey the one that gave us life. Is this making sense? Mm -hmm. yeah, it is. So when are you going to repent and put your faith in Christ? I'm thinking about it already. <laughs> you are? Yeah. Would you be embarrassed if I pray with you? No. Okay, let's bear in prayer. Father, I thank you for Mal. Thank you for her open heart and her concern about her eternal salvation. I pray today she'll see the issues that are at stake. She'll catch a glimpse of your love that you expressed on the cross and of your holiness and find a place of genuine sorrow for our sins and be born again this day and trust alone in Jesus and pass from death to life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Do you have a Bible at home? I do, my mom gives me one. She did? Yeah, she did. Like I said, we're not religious, but my mom believes that there's, there's something out there. Yeah. And you should be paying attention what the Bible says. Yeah. You know, I rode past you before, right down there, and I came all the way back because uh, I felt that I should speak to you and I'm sure glad I did because God cares about you and loves you okay thank you. thank you let me get you something 
Lucy, put your glasses on properly, sit in there. This is a book I wrote called Scientific Facts in the Bible, and that'll strengthen your faith in God's Word. And there's a little booklet called Save Yourself Some Pain that'll uh, give you principles of Christian growth. You gonna read that? Yes, I love to read and I'm gonna read this though. <laughs> this already sounds interesting. Real quick, here are three things to help you grow in your faith. The Living Waters Podcast, the Evidence Study Bible, 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith and much more. The Starter Kit, four of our most popular gospel tracks, available at livingwaters.com. If you've not seen the Mario video, Oh, you've got to watch it. It really is quite amazing. You can watch it right now by clicking up to your left.